Okay, all right, so just getting started. I am early. Yes, I am. We're going to talk about Barbarian again. We've been talking about Barbarians for quite some time as it happens. And uh, today, I actually plan to do this at 7.30, but we are going to talk about ability score improvements and feats because this is the, the one thing that uh, a lot of people have a big problem deciding between do I increase my ability score or do I increase my feats okay all right so we're gonna get started um, as always please put your questions your feedback into the chat box the live chat box right now if you want to um, and I uh, will go from there all right Hi, welcome to How to d d My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons 5e. And this is how to play Dungeons and Dragons 5e. And we're covering the ability score improvement that the Barbarian gets. Now, <clears throat> the Barbarian is one of those classes, like all classes, who get the opportunity to get an ability score improvement. So there's nothing new in that. That's completely the, that's completely the same. With all the other classes, they have very much the same sort of structure to that. But uh, what you want to try to do is when you get to this point where you get that opportunity to get an ability score improvement or a feat, then this is a chance for your barbarian to grow in strength, toughness and resolve. So if you could please turn to page 49 of the player's handbook for details on the Barbarian's Ability Score Improvement. I'm going to read the feature just briefly and then I'm going to cover it and give you my uh, ad some advice and my perspective and some of the perspective of the players that I've had at my ta table. So when you reach 4th level and again at 8th level, 12th level, 16th level, 19th level, you can increase one Ability Score of your choice by 2. Or you can increase two different ability scores of your choice by one. As normal, you can't increase an ability score above 20 using this feature. Okay, now what it doesn't say is, provided that your dungeon master is allowing you to use feats, you can also pick up a feat rather than have the ability score increase. You, you, you either get... The ability score increase or the feat. That's the trade-off. And you've got to make that decision as a player which is going to be more important to you. What I'm going to say right now is I think when you're starting out with your character, uh, particularly at the lowest levels or the lower levels, it's probably more sensible to try and pick up the ability score improvement. Increasing your ab ability scores, particularly strength and constitution, probably would be my first choice. So I would advise you increasing your strength score up to 20 while, you, you know, while you're dealing with 4th level and 8th level. Do that first. That's probably the most important thing you need to, to focus on. And the reason being is that your whole class is built around your strength score and your constitution score, but in particular your strength score. Most of it is all related to strength. And then I would, later on, my personal opinion is I'd go with strength, get that to 20, and then I would start increasing my constitution score after that. But it is your choice, you make that decision. But strength and constitution affect so much of your character's mechanics, whether that be attacks, class features, or defenses. As I mentioned, you can pick up a feat. And this is only available because, remember, feats is optional. Dungeon Masters do not have to use them. They could choose to simply say, no, I'm not interested. We're going to leave that alone. But you can pick them up if you want, and your Dungeon Master allows them. The trade-off is you don't get the ability score in improvement. Some of the things that I find interesting about um, feats is usually it's a, it's a huge advantage to take a feat. The Barbarian actually doesn't really need them. Adding additional mechanical features to the Barbarian. There are some feats that usually are really good for all the classes, and I'm going to cover them very shortly. But as a general rule, you're probably perfectly fine not using feats as, at all, and just sticking with the ability score improvement. But what I'll do is I'll go through some of the feats that I have, what I would say, 
Not a significant improvement, I would semi-useful feats that you could pick up if you wanted to. And then I'm going to talk about the more useful feats if you wanted to pick them up and why. So the ones that stand out for me is semi-useful feats is alert and that is because danger sense and um, feral instinct sort of take up a lot of what alert would do. Uh, athlete, charger, dungeon delver, grappler, uh, mage slayer, martial adept, mobile, observant, savage attacker, tavern brawler and shield master. They are semi-useful feats. I don't know that I would pick them up over taking a, an ability score improvement myself. But as I said, it's your choice. Feats that are more useful in my opinion, and as I said, this is my opinion and what my players have given me feedback on, are Jewel Wielder, Durable, Great Weapon Master, Healer, yes I know you're starting to wonder why, why did I just say Healer, but seriously, Healer is a pretty impressive feat. Linguistic, okay, now, <laughs> Linguist, now Linguist seems like a really strange feat to suggest for the Barbarian, but Linguist is great for any class because it gives you three additional languages that you can speak. Remember, Dungeons and Dragons is not just about killing stuff or, and taking their stuff off them. It's not just about fighting. Lucky, Lucky is always good for any class. Pull Arm Master, I know that sounds strange, but trust me, I've seen Barbarians done really well with Pull Arm Master. Sentinel, Skilled, because you get more skills. Tough. Now, the bonus and benefits of taking feats is, if you like complexity, then you're going to get more mechanics. Usually the feats are more mechanical. They give you more mechanical aspects to the game compared to just a, an ability score improvement. That's the pluses and the minuses. So if you like complexity, it's good. If you don't like complexity, it's going to be bad. If you take a feat, you need to be very careful about what you select because, uh, as I said, some of the feats, the semi-useful ones, are duplicated a little bit in the actual class features for the Barbarian, particularly at higher levels. So what I would really want is for people to give me some idea, some idea what they have used as feats and why, and that can be done in the chat box right now. I'm going to start going through some of the more useful feats and why I think they are useful and why they are not useful in my opinion. Um, as I said, Alert is kind of duplicated by Danger Sense and Feral Instinct. Athlete, I mean it's, it's fine to be able to climb and, and do stuff like that, run and jump and so forth. That's all fine, but if you're not really going to be doing an awful lot of that, it was never um, a feat that I was particularly impressed by, Athlete. The next one is Charger. So the good thing is that you get to uh, you get a bonus to your attack, provided you move a certain distance. So you need to make sure you're setting yourself up for that sort of thing. I feel like it's a bit situational and it's very easy to sort of forget that you, you can use it. But uh, a plus five bonus to attack um, to the attack's damage is pretty impressive, but there are better ways of pumping out more damage rather than take, taking something like Charger. Uh, the next one I would say is Jewel Wielder is not a silly feat to take. Jewel Wielder is actually pretty good uh, simply because you can now wield two weapons and they don't have to be light. They, they, can, they could be something else. They, they don't have to be light. You can use a single-handed weapon and it doesn't have to be light. So there's, there's an opportunity to use a higher damage dice compared to the light weapons. So not a silly choice at all. Uh, Dungeon Delver, I, I personally feel like Danger Sense takes up a lot of, and even uh, Feral Instinct takes up a lot of what Dungeon Delver does, but there, there's some benefits to having advantage with Perception Checks and Investigation Checks. Um, and certainly having uh, the opportunity to have advantage on saving throws 
made to to avoid or resist traps, particularly if it's not revolving around dexterity. Durability, you're going to wind up getting more hit points. And it plays into the fact that this is what barbarians do. They have lots of hit points. They try to soak up damage. So not, not a silly feat to have. Grappler. I'm not so sold on Grappler unless you really are, are going to be using this uh, a lot and you're going to focus on it. Otherwise it's going to feel like it's too situational to me. Unless you are going to specifically go try to pin your opponent in combat. Kind of helpful if you're only dealing with one target. But if you're dealing with multiple targets I feel like it's not so useful. Okay so Great Weapon Master. I've never really liked Great Weapon Master. I don't like the idea of getting a penalty to my attack rolls to get a bonus of plus 10 to my damage. But as some of my friends have pointed out many times, uh, my dislike of Great Weapon Master is foolish because mathematically it makes sense. Uh, now this is provided you're hitting a target with a low armor class if you're hitting a target with a high armor class, then Great Weapon Master is not so useful to you. But mathematically, you've got a better chance of trucking out more damage with Great Weapon Master um, than pretty much anything else. So it does make a lot of sense, but not against high armor class targets. Healer. One of the great things about the healer feat is, and I know you're thinking, well, I'm a barbarian, I'm not going to be having time. That's what the clerics do. The barbarians do that. Uh, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a bard, cleric, and uh, a druid job. They do the healing. No, well, actually, it really should be everybody's. And I, I've said it many times that everybody should have a healer's kit. But this is great because it means that if somebody needs to be stabilized, you can use a healer's kit, and instead of them being on zero hit points, they're on one hit point. That means they're back in the fight. You only need one hit point above zero to be back in the fight. And how many times can you do this? As many times as you have uses of your healer's kit. You can also use your action and try to uh, give them more hit points. Simply super. I think it's one of the smartest things you can do is actually have this particular feat. Any class should have this particular feat, which is why I pointed it out. Okay, next is Linguist. Remember, Dungeons and Dragons isn't just about just chopping things up. Um, there's nothing wrong with taking Linguist because, not so much because you get an increase to your intelligence, that's not quite so useful, but it's the additional skill, uh, additional ability to, to speak languages. You get three languages, and creating ciphers and so forth, I, I really, I mean, it's not a big deal for me. I didn't really see that being the, the big play, but three additional languages is awesome. Okay, Lucky is always going to be great for anybody because you get three luck points and getting to re-roll a 20-sided dice is always going to be an advantage to any class. I, I can't count the number of times I've seen lucky used and it's turned out really well, like the right time to use it and it's been, it's been the deciding factor sometimes. Okay, next is Mage Slayer. Not so useful, basically you're really good at taking out mages if you get up close. And barbarians are all about getting up close, so if you can get in close, then uh, casting spells for a, a mage is going to be very difficult. You've got a whole lot of um, benefits there. I don't think it's the sort of feat you want to take personally, but I have seen people do it. Uh, next would be Martial Adept. Martial Adept uh, basically gives you the combat maneuvers from the Battlemaster archetype. Uh, if you like complexity and wanting to sort of uh, have options available to you, it's it's not a silly option at, or feat to take. I personally put it in the in the semi useful feat section, but I have been proven wrong more than a few times. Uh, next is mobile, not so useful because really darting in and out of combat is not what you're going to be doing unless you're weaving through the enemy to get closer to the back line then it would be a bit different but i just feel like it's a bit it's a bit too mobile was really designed to be jumping in and out of combat and don't worry about opportunity attacks causing you trouble that's really what it was all about observant basically getting uh plus five to your passive wisdom 
and that's your perception checks and your your passive intelligence for an investigation it's great um i i don't i don't personally like it you've got to be careful if you've got a dungeon master who doesn't use a lot of passive checks then you kind of hamstrung there it's gonna it's gonna fly back on you a bit pole master pole arm master it's always good to be able to attack with the other end of a look it, they do heaps of damage glaive halberd not so much the quarter staff but they do heaps of damage and being able to use the other end to make another attack with a, a bonus action really helpful so uh yes certainly i would consider doing that and the fact that you have reach suddenly everything Combine something like Polearm Master with Sentinel and, and they're really going to have a hard time. Uh, next would be, I didn't know, I didn't, I was, I was going to say, I was going to say Resilient, but no. Resilient, the, the Barbarian's all about damage reduction and damage resistance anyway, so you don't really need that. Okay, next, Savage Attack, not really one of my favourites. Um, I don't really see any point. Being able to re-roll a damage dice... Um, I mean, it, it, it's got some uses to it. You might you might roll high, you might lo roll lower. Uh, personally, I don't think you need to worry too much about it. Sen Sentinel is a different story. Sentinel makes a huge difference um, and changes the ball game completely. So I, I do recommend Sentinel as a feat if you decide to take feats. Uh, Shieldmaster, not so much. I don't really feel like you need to worry too much about that. There are so many features that the Barbarian already have that you you don't need to worry about trying to protect yourself so much. Okay, they've got damage resistance. They've got resistance, you know. They've got um, features that allow them to mitigate all sorts of things. They've got so many hit points as it is. There, there is the opportunity to, to avoid somebody else taking damage. So I guess that makes a little bit of sense. Shoving them around. I don't see any point in shoving somebody with a shield. Not unless you have something behind them they can fall off or push them into a fire it's a bit too situational for me okay uh next skilled skilled is a good idea so you get to be proficient in a combination of three skills or tools of your choice having additional skills is always useful just like having additional languages so a very good feat to take uh next would be i'm gonna skip by Skulker and so forth. Um, Tavern Brawler, semi-useful feat. I'm not even going to go anywhere near it. Personally, I've never liked it that much. Tough is a good feat. More hit points is always a good thing for a character class that focuses on having lots of hit points in the first place. But you really, I don't feel like you really need to have them. As I said, honestly, I don't think you need to have feats for a barbarian and the ability improvement usually i would wouldn't do feats until at least level 12. i would go fourth level eighth level i'm going to increase my main ability score first and then i would start working on feats but if you're a human then you know you can take a feat straight off the bat if you want to use the the variant okay all right so this is your opportunity please um, if you found this helpful or informative share and like the video uh, but more importantly, I want to stress that it is, is actually, there's so many things at play here that your feedback and your comments are really useful, not just for me, but for other people. And you do not have to agree with me. I am not an absolute expert. I tell you right now, I'm just a guy who plays Dungeons and Dragons and tries to present people with information and details on YouTube that you might not get from somebody else. I try really hard to try and do that sort of content. And if I haven't done that, then you need to let me know. Uh, if you want to support my channel, then please just subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Hit the bell button to be notified when I go live. And also when I publish a new video. If you want to really support my channel, then watch more of my videos. Watching my video right now is supporting me and that helps. I don't do Patreon. But down in the description there are affiliate links you know the story about those things right you buy something online i get a small commission which helps my channel and you don't even have to buy the thing that it's linked to whatever i've linked to it doesn't matter you can buy something else that's the great thing about amazon and the book depository uh, i really want you to start posting in 
uh, your feedback, what you thought of today's presentation, any comments, suggestions, all of that in the chat box right now before I leave. Otherwise, if you're not part of the live stream, down in the comments is where you want to put your feedback, any questions, uh, anything you disagree with, anything you want to add, anything I left out, all of that down in the comments section. And that is where we're going to stop for today. I'm going to say, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. And that's a wrap. How's it going, Lefty? Hi there, man. I'm glad you can make it, and thank you for giving me some feedback. Um, obviously, I, I'm, I'm interested about the person who decided to go with the thumbs down. Whoever gave me the thumbs down, if they're still around, I need you to tell me what was wrong about the video that was bad. Let me know what I did wrong. Um, a thumbs down alone isn't enough to give me an idea of how I can do things differently. Thumbs up, then I know I'm doing something right. But I'm not going to focus on one thing. Um, Lefty, I think you should be able to do either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, feats are optional. The Dungeon Master doesn't have to use them. Um, as a Dungeon Master myself, I allow people to use feats because it's in the player's handbook. I don't really want to sort of say no to that. Um, and I'm not really worried too much about them building a character that's overpowered. I never have. I've always been able to compensate. Um, and I'm, I'm the sort of uh, person who always presents quite a lot of easy combats, lulling my players into a full sense of security, and then I hit them with the, the big battle, the climactic battle, and then things are totally different. So it doesn't matter what they've taken or what books they're using. Um, I've usually figured out how to make things really <laughs> reasonably tough or difficult. Um... Lefty, so it was pretty good? Oh, good. Um, you didn't come in late. I started early. And, and maybe that's why somebody was unhappy. I started early because I want to go and have dinner. Uh, Lefty, what did you miss? Oh, look, it's all, going to get, it's all going to go up online very shortly once YouTube publishes it. So you haven't really missed anything. Uh, what's this? Um, if you have good... Ability scores, then you get more benefits from feats. Well, you get more benefits, not so much from the feats, but you get more benefits from the existing class features. And there are so many class features. That the Barbarian has really impressive class features, and they all sort of tie into strength and constitution, which is why I, I highly recommend pumping them up as much as you can. But you don't have to do it that way. Uh, these are just suggestions. Okay, all right. Well, there are no more comments. And Lefty, I appreciate all of the feedback. Otherwise, I would have felt like I was alone again. And um, for those of you who felt like I started too early, I, I, I do apologize. It's just I came, came in late and my partner's cooking. And I'm probably already in the dog box because I haven't finished. Uh, Lefty, um, or... Or my bad, I just read it's for the Barbarian. Yeah, it's for the Barbarian. Ability score improvements or feats, yeah, for the Barbarian. I would have different feedback. If I was doing a video on the Fighter, or if I was doing feedback on any other class, my feedback would be different with regard to ability scores and feats. Uh, for obvious reasons, because every class is different. All right, thank you. I'm never alone. Thank you, Lefty. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it quits tonight. And what is likely to happen tomorrow? I feel like... I feel like it's time to start talking about the Barbarian's Primal Path. So I think tomorrow we're going to definitely be talking about the Primal Path for the Barbarian. Will I be going into a lot of detail? Probably not. I'm probably going to gloss over a lot of stuff. Because I feel like there's enough complexity there that I could break that up into smaller videos. And um, that's what I'm trying to do is try to avoid making really long videos and making them shorter. Just so that you guys have time to watch them. There's so much content now. You can't get to all of my stuff. You've got other channels to watch as well. So tomorrow night, Primal Path, that's the plan. And uh, I'll see you later Lefty and everybody else. Good night.